So morning, everybody. So my name is Rachel and I'm excited to welcome you to eBay Elevate this morning, a brand new webinar series which is brought to you by eBay and Small Business Britain. Before we get started, I'd just like to state that the advice and opinions shared in this session are my own and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of eBay or Small Britain. I'd like to add to that, it was really important that you do your own research and due diligence when we're talking about money. So let's get a start. So this is me. My name's Rachel. Um, I'm the founder and proud owner of Ask the Chameleon. So who am I? So please do connect with me on LinkedIn and all the other social media platforms. Um, but basically, I'm actually HR by trade. Um, I started my career working in local government and then I moved into the charity sector where I found that I had a flair for writing funding applications. Um, this continued through a 10 to 15 year career. I'm based in Burton on Trent in the Midlands. Um, and I started as the Chameleon eight years ago next week, um, primarily to support charities at that time with funding applications. The business has grown. I now write for a myriad of different companies, commercial and not-for-profit. And I've brought in 38 million during that period. I am self-taught. And what I've uncovered is that I'm massively competitive about finding the money. I'm also a, trust, a trustee, a chairperson at Vanderbilt's Angels, which is a cancer-based trust here in the Midlands. I'm a member of the Federation of Small Business and their area lead, which is a volunteer position. And I'm a member of my local chamber. There's lots more I can tell you about me, but that's not what we're here for, because today we're going to be talking about funding. So in this session, it's 25 minutes. So hang on to your seats, it's gonna be fast. We're going to look at what are the grants and why you need to apply for them, where you can find them, that all important application form. And then there might be a little bit of time at, at the end for Q&As, but you can post those in the relevant chat. So let's talk about grants. The first thing I need to tell you is there is some money for some businesses in certain areas. It's a myth that there's lots everywhere because quite frankly, there isn't. And the most frustrating part of my job actually is trying to uncover the different grants. But what I can do in this session is give you some places to search so that will cut down your time, but it's not for the faint hearted. And I would be um, leading you up the garden path if I just said, oh, there's loads of money out there, just quickly apply and off you go. So what are grants? So the main thing to tell you about grants is that these are pots of money normally given by mainstream bodies. And what I mean by that are local government departments, central government development agencies. Typically, and for a long time, they came from European sources. So money that we sent over as part of being part of Europe came back to us. The key thing for grants, as opposed to any other business finance, is that these aren't repayable. They're all yours, but they come with catches when they come with requirements because you don't get anything for nothing in this life. It's very rare that they are 100% of the spend. So you'll hear terms like match. And what that means is I'll give you 60 pounds, you will put 40 pounds to it, the total project is 100 pounds. They tend to be time critical, which is very frustrating for a lot of business owners. You are so nimble, you're so quick. These guys tend to be an awful lot longer so that you very rarely um, can cover anything that you've already paid or something that's underway. It tends to be for brand new, fresh, shiny things, which again can be frustrating. The most important thing is that last point risk. The grant holders want to be able to give you this money, make no mistake, they really do, but they want to know that you're a safe pair of hands, that you're going to use it for what you say you're going to use it for, and it's gonna have the outcome that you say it's going to have, with a favorable wind, obviously, but that that risk, has been reduced by the very different things that you've put in place to make sure that what you say is gonna happen as a result of that money is gonna happen. So typically what are the grants used for? So you can tend to have capital funds. So these are things like purchases of items, equipment, it could be to help you move, um, renovate that particular new building or factory. And sometimes you can use it for bespoke items, hardware and software but you must check the eligibility criteria. Sometimes it's also available for revenue. So these tend to be staffing ongoing costs as a result of running your business. Websites, so websites tend to be a revenue item rather than a capital. 
and marketing is considered to be a, re a revenue. Sometimes some of these can be ineligible costs. So they will pay for staffing, but they won't pay for marketing and vice versa. The reason that I fell into this from being a HR professional is that I liken this to applying for a job. So when you get the application form for a job, they say what the essential criteria are and what the desirables are. It's very similar with this. So whilst it's terribly dull sometimes to read all the pack that comes with an application for a grant opportunity, please, please do take the time to be able to do that. It's absolutely essential. Do not waste your time and the funder's time with asking for something that they, they deem to be ineligible. You might say, well, that's fundamental to the business, to the project that we're going to do, but it's their money. They get to choose how they want you to spend it. And historically, with European money, there was very, very defined criteria on what could and could not be funded. You're going to get copies of all of these slides and the recording, so please don't worry about taking notes about things like this long slide that's covered with terminology. What I've done here is I've broken down a couple of the common things that you'll hear about. Language of funders is a unique thing and a very special thing. And they forget that actually to the straightforward business owner that's never delved into this area, that you don't understand what the words might necessarily mean. Um, a good funder will give you a terminology breakdown in their pack. The most important thing with a lot of them is to make sure what their expectations are, make sure you understand the eligibility of the criteria of the funding. A lot of this was terminology associated with European funding, but what I'm seeing now with the introduction of the replacement to European funds, which is called the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, I'm seeing a lot of similarities with this. The good thing with the UK Shared Prosperity Fund is that actually for the first time, what I'm seeing is that hospitality and retail businesses are going to be covered. So let me just take a moment to explain what's happened here. European ESF, ERDF, they love these acronyms, has, will stop this June. The UK has a new fund now that it's going to be using for innovation and for business support. It's called the UK Share Prosperity Fund, SPF. This money is coming down to local authorities, so your local council. They are then going to disseminate this information and this funding, and you will find that typically chambers of commerce, growth hubs, um, and other business hubs that come out of universities are going to start to deliver these programs. So they will take a considerable amount of this terminology and how things have run before, if it's worked well, and they're going to create new programs of support that might have some money attached to it that you can apply into. This time round, retail and hospitality should be included, but they will have certain key criteria, like a maximum amount of funding that you're able to have as a business, which typically used to be called de minimis. They've, they've got something similar now. And this is to make sure that not one company gets more slice of the cake than everybody else. They will be targeted at achieving local priorities, and I suspect as well, they will be targeted for generation of employment and GVA in that area. So you have to make those match together. So where are we going to find them? They are, <laughs> the finding of grants is not for the faint hearted, um, but once you start to look, you can become more and more competent and more capable in how to find them. Here are some shortcuts for you, because if you Google it, you get 234 million results, which is not what we want to see. So LEPS, Local Enterprise Partnerships. These guys were created after the end of the development agencies, and they've had a considerable chunk of the European money to date. Um, lots of LEPS are changing due to the introduction of the Share Prosperity Fund. But if you go to this website, you can find the Local Enterprise Partnership in your area. They are there to support and help you as a business. They give free advice and support and they will have remnants of European money. But bear in mind that you also need to keep an eye on what's happening in your economic regeneration department at your local council. LEPS also gave out contracts to something called growth hubs. 
Now, if those of you are a similar age to me and have been in self-employment for a long time, you'll remember Business Link. So growth hubs with a replacement to Business Link, they tend to be run by your local chamber of commerce. Again, these are primarily there to support businesses. They give one-to-one -one support and advice. Their world is changing because they're funded through the LEPs. But it's important to make these connections because when the transition starts to happen, you will be receiving the information. They all do e-bulletins, I'm sure. I know they can be painful to read, but it's like when you buy a brand new um, car, then you see that make a model everywhere. It's the same with grants. Once you see them and you do need to dig into them to be able to work out whether you're eligible. But the first step, obviously, is to receive the information. So putting those ones to one side, what other things are out there? So Innovate UK. Innovate is a government um, funded department, primarily looking into things like STEM and um, tech, but they do have smaller programs for creatives. They've had a couple of this year and they do have one for women in innovation as well. Primarily looking for companies that they've not funded before. You do need to be a limited company to apply, which means it's difficult for the sole trader guys amongst us, um, but they are there. They have 54 competitions. These are not for the faint hearted, but take a look, keep, on, keep them on your radar. It depends on the nature of what you do. A couple for the social enterprise creative area of things is the Heritage Lottery Fund and the Arts Council. Again, they can have funds that are coming on and off. And you can also use portals. So I also write tenders as well as grant funding and I use a portal called B2B quote. There are lots of others. Don't forget to look at your local Federation of Small Business or your Chambers of Commerce, particularly if you're members. More often than not, they have a business funding um, support mechanism within their plethora of membership advice and guidance. So be looking out for those. There are also competitions. So sometimes you will see pitch competitions with Enterprise Nation, with um, Small Business Boost, there could be things coming out of a university. So if you're an alumni, there could be particular programs that are out there where you pitch your business idea, you could win an award, but you could also win um, an amount of money to go with it. And more often than not, they tend to be unrestricted money so that you can use that for exactly what you need. What I've got here for you, I hope that you're all sticking with me by now, but I, because I realize I'm rattling through this, are some examples. So digital growth program, this gave grants between 2,000 and 25,000 um, pounds, but this was a 35% intervention rate. So what this meant was your total project would be 25 grand, for example, but they would give you 35% of that. You would find the 65% match. Another one that was particular in my local area in the Midlands, a smaller amount of money. This was eligible for sole traders as well as limited companies. So grants between a thousand and two and a half thousand pounds. Minimum project was spend was four up to a maximum of 10. They would give you 25 percent. So that one is a great example of I call it like cash back. So you would pay it all up front and then you would reclaim the 25 percent back. So it's like having the back back. And then particularly if you're younger, there are targeted programs for anybody under the age of 30. Um, and the, the best one that I can signpost you to is the Prince's Trust, because not only is there um, an a low interest loan and a small amount of grant, but they give you a great support package. So if you've got anybody that's a, a budding entrepreneur within your friends and family that's within that age range and hasn't yet started, they're a great one to look for. So it's a whistle stop tour through how to find them but let's talk now about what to do when you do find that application um i see a lot of common mistakes um i've made them in my time too um so i'm going to give you my insight into how to reduce the likelihood of that happening so that you can write a really winning application form so common mistakes so common mistakes are that actually you're ineligible from the very start so that you haven't read that stack of criteria that goes with it. So you're a sole trader, but this is for limited companies. It's unfair. It's not right. You have a great business idea, 
but it's their money they get to decide and one thing that I really want to press home to you is and this has happened to me please don't be dissuaded too much if the answer comes back at no it doesn't mean that you're not a great business it just means that you don't meet their criteria that's all it is pick yourself up dust yourself off and go and find something else please don't give up just because they've said no you will find hopefully the one for you it's like dating last minute applications I can tell when when I've made a last minute application in my past so can the funders it is a human being that reads these and the reason that they know it's last minute is that there's missing details the language is vague um, and that you haven't put the information in that they've asked for you want to put them in a good mood give them what they want in the way that they want it um, and make sure that you've shown how you are the best of a but you don't have to be the best business in the world you have to be the best of those that have applied and show them how you are going to give them what they're looking to fund. A common one is failure to answer the question. So I used to be a university lecturer um, and our essay questions were always three questions in one. Do you remember those? Which is really irritating. So you tend to answer the first one and maybe the second one, but not the one in the middle. So again, make sure you answer the question that they're asking you. So write the information out, go back and double check. Be reasonable with your value for money. They will want to see how you spend the money. They are entitled to have copies of your bank statements. They are entitled to, to see into your evidence of invoices paid who they went to, for example. And the reason they're entitled to this is they're giving you their money. So make sure you ask for things that are reasonable. And Fundamentally, you have to be able to wait. As I said before, entrepreneurs and business owners get very frustrated by the fact that it can take eight to 12 weeks. I'm ready to go now is what they say to me. I've got all my ducks in a row. I've got everything. I know how, who I want to purchase it from. We're ready to go. You have to wait. And that's what puts a lot of people off from applying. So how to avoid all of this? you need to plan and you need to prepare. I'm gonna show you in a bit, there are some things that you can get ready to go now so that you can be in a better position to be able to get that application form in when it lands. The biggest thing that you need is time. And I know that's difficult because for example, whilst you're here with me today, you're not working on your business. I know it's half an hour, but it's half an hour. So you need to make sure that you've got enough time to do it in the evenings or the weekends to be able to get that application in. And what I do is, the information lands and I get myself a checklist of everything that I need. And I also get myself some help. Now that might be somebody like me or equally, it could be your partner, your friend, you know, another business colleague that you know that's really good at reading through things. So if your attention to detail suffers or your spelling and grammar is not the best, find somebody for whom that's their talent, that's their superpower. So to summarize, make sure you're eligible, make sure you've got time, make sure you've got the evidence and make sure that you've got the capacity to be able to do that. Those four things are what you must have to be able to put that application form in. So what are they gonna ask you? You're thinking, right, Rachel, I'm, I'm ready, but how do I know what evidence I'm gonna need? So these are some core questions. So this is the information that you can get ready in a Word document somewhere ready to go. They want to know, you know who you are, they want to know your dates, your numbers, your SIT code, which you can find on Companies House if you're a limited company. And they want perhaps just 50 or 100 words about you, how you started, if you're registered with any particular trade bodies. So for example, if I was still working in HR, that I'm registered with my professional institute. And they also want to know your numbers, um, they want to know your profit and loss. They might ask for audited accounts. If you haven't got those, have you got management accounts? Have you got evidence that you can give to them? Have you got a forecast? And have you got a project cost and breakdown? Now, if you're applying for some money, so like the MBV one, for example, which gave you 25%, you could use that to buy items. If you're buying items, more often than not, they will want three quotes from you. So three similar quotes for each one. 
Your quotes don't have to be exactly the same and you don't have to go for the cheapest one, but there needs to be justification as to why you would choose that one. So if, you, if your finance information is all over the place, um, I'm all about the words, less about the numbers, then use a basic Excel spreadsheet like this. So this will just take your headlines from your accounts and your figures for you to be able to put in. So you've got your past years, you've got your current, and you've got your, for, your future forward. The line at the bottom is headcount, FTE is full-time equivalent. That's your members of staff. So again, if you've got staff and this project is going to help you grow and take on more employment, then you need to be sharing that in your forecast. Again, if this isn't your particular area of expertise, get your accountant or a very number-friendly business owner to help you. So let's get you a grant application folder. This is what you can be doing this weekend um, or when you've got a spare hour away from your business. This is what you need, your financial information. So if like me, you're a limited company, I have my accounts scanned in and I have them in my particular subfolder of my grants folder. My insurance documents, so either scanned in copies of my certificates or again, a Word document with the statements in as to who the insurer is, how much it's for, when the expiry date is. If you've got staff, you might want to have key CVs in there so that all of your CVs look the same. Again, it shows business branding and consistency. It reduces the risk because everything's looking the same. Your company data, so the information about your SIT code and your company number, a bit about you. Policies and procedures. So again, some funders might want to know that you've got those. So there are things like recruitment and selection, health and safety, how you're handling the data, that's particularly important. And another one to put in there, because it can add weight, are client case studies and testimonials. So that's very useful for tenders. It's also useful for business awards, which is another thing that I write. So if you've got it all in one place, then it just means that it's one folder. And as these things change, you can update that. So it gives you just one place to put everything. Common format. So. They just tend to ask you basic information so you can copy it over from that folder. Um, and then they want to know what you're going to do with this. So what do you want the money for? It's all about justification. So save that as a template and use it as your base. So here's just a quick example. So it's a business to business. They've been trading. They want to buy some uh, more camera equipment. They're forecasting. So you can see here how we're building up the justification for it. And the options are based on my past information that I gave you, is that we could get two and just over two grand back through MBV. And with the Business Gateway, a different fund that's perhaps available, we could get 35%, which is a little bit more. But this funder wants to see job creation. So as part of my application as Hayward Creatives, I would be showing that this additional funding that they're going to give me and the additional 15k worth of work I'm actually going to create a new job for a, a local member of staff. Other questions that you can expect are all around justifying why should I give you my money and some local authority officers do consider it to be theirs but it is public money and they are accountable for that so think what are they going to ask me that I can then have the response back to to be able to justify why I'm best for that money. A quick slide about quotes. So always check your guidelines. Do you need one or three or two? And make sure that you don't buy these things in advance. Once they say to you, yes, Rachel, the money's yours, you've got something in writing, then I go off because then all my receipts and invoices, et cetera, and purchase orders are dated from today onwards. They get very nerdy about dates and things like that. A quick slide on tackling the question. This is really important that you answer what they want to know. So that's all about giving yourself the time, isn't it, to make sure that you're not quickly skim reading and thinking, oh, they just want to know this, this and this. I'll copy and paste this from before, for example. Please don't do that without editing. We all copy and paste, it's, a, it's a, a fact that we all do it, but you must tailor, you must edit. And if they want supporting documents, give them. And if they don't, 
please don't put them in. Remember, it's all about giving them what they want, when they want it, and putting them in that excellent mood. I know I've labored this point, but I'm gonna labor it again. Your first draft is never enough. Make sure that it's proofread and give yourself the time. Treat this as if it is the opportunity of a lifetime, no matter how small the money is, but also this is leaving your company and going to somebody else and taking all your reputation and brand with it. You want it to land well, because we always remember the ones that aren't very good. So you want it to have the best chance that it's got. I'm so aware that I've rattled through this for you, but let's just pull it all together. So get your checklist from the application form. I'm old school, I print and I highlight and I write myself a list. Do whatever works for you. Create that plan. If you've got somebody else to delegate to, that's fantastic. If it's all on you, then make sure you cut that elephant into small chunks and do it bit by bit. And then make sure you know what to do next. So you submit it. So make sure you've got copies of everything. Put a deadline note in your diary of the outcome date because sometimes they slip. If they've not come back to you by the deadline that it was due, just send them a nice email saying, I'm just checking, is everything still on board? I expected an outcome by now. Keep that relationship professional and warm. So you've got the money. This is fantastic. Make sure you've got evidence of everything. Keep copies of your bank statements. Check about wet signatures and digital. One of the good things from COVID is actually we've moved to more of a digital one now, but sometimes they still insist on a wet copy. Make sure you comply with their monitoring reports and keep in regular communications with them. Speak to them. They do want to talk to you. Their resources might be limited, but they've given you some money. So keep in touch with them if dates slip, for lots of different reasons, talk to them. The more in control you are with that conversation, the better it will be, and it could lead to future money. So always bear that in mind. The flip side, you weren't successful. So ask for feedback. Sometimes they can't, but always be the person that asks. Let them say no to you. You put that in. And keep an eye out then for further opportunities. You could potentially be on their radar. There might be another fund that's dropping in the next quarter or six months later. Keep searching for further opportunities. Go back to those bodies that I talked about at the beginning and ask for further help and guidance. Like I said at the very beginning, please don't think that this means that you're not a sound business. You are. There's perhaps just more steps that you need to put in place to be successful last, next time. Please do look about for the grants that are available to you. It's been my absolute pleasure to talk to you this morning and to talk to you today. If you're watching this on Catch Up, um, connect with me, ask me questions, and I wish you all the very best in your search for the money. Thank you very much. Bye now.